In this video, I'm gonna show you how to decorate this adorable barnyard animals cake. Hi, it's Carolyn. If you wanna learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes, then I would love for you to join me by hitting subscribe and the bell. If you wanna skip the intro and get right into the video, there are chapters linked below. So I'm gonna show you how to decorate this adorable barnyard theme cake. And like always, I am starting with my cakes already baked, filled, iced, and they are in the refrigerator waiting to be decorated. I have videos showing you how I bake, fill, ice, uh, refrigerate cakes, all of that is going to be listed in the description and any tools that I use or videos that I reference will be listed in the description as well. And I will also let you know how much I charge for this cake. So let's get started. Like always, I have gum tax, Tylos powder, CMC powder, it's all the same thing. It's mixed into my fondant. It's gonna help the fondant set a little harder. It's gonna be so much easier to work with. I put this in all the fondant that I use. I will link it below. Let's start by stacking a cake. I got the cake out of the fridge. That icing is solid. I'm not going to mess it up. I'm marking the front. The front is the most symmetrical and I'm using my ruler to see how tall I have to cut these straws. And all the tools that I use will be linked in the description. So I mark it with a marker. I cut the marker off and I put the straws in the cake. I have a tutorial where I go into detail on how I stack cakes and I will link that in the description for you. So I'm making sure it's level. Get down some buttercream. My hands are clean. Always my hands are clean. <laughs> I don't always show it, but I'm always washing my hands. I'm handling these cakes. I'm removing it from that cardboard, stacking it on top of the bottom tier, make sure it's level, and then repeating the process, getting the straws. I measured the straws, got them in. You know, I'm doing the same thing, doweling the cake and covering that hole with the buttercream. Let's put that back in the fridge. Now I have a cake box lid. I cut the lids off of cake boxes and I use them for things like this. I rolled that out. I use a fondant smoother to smooth it out and I'm making the gingham pattern. So I have this plunger cutter and you could see how one line is light pink and red and the other line line is white and light pink. So I'm just going, you know, cutting a bunch of different squares and set that aside. Now I want to put the gingham pattern on the cake. I got that out of the refrigerator. So the icing is cold and it's solid. I'm not going to mess it up. I'm getting some piping gel around that bottom part of the middle border and then thinning it out with a little bit of water and look at the pattern again. So I'm starting with the red and light pink going all the way around the bottom part with it. Where it meets in the back, it was a little smaller, so I had to cut the piece a little smaller. And then the pink goes on top of the red, and the white, I'm sorry, the pink goes up on, on top of the red, the white goes on the pink, like the picture. I'm just doing that around the entire thing. And that looks good, using my palette knife just to push that down, making sure it's even. And let's put that back in the fridge. Now I have a piece of non-slip pad underneath my cutting board so it doesn't slide around, a wet paper towel, an X-Acto knife, and my Dresden tool and also a little bit of water. I didn't show that. I measured my cake and I printed that out the size I wanted to be. I had that red fondant rolled out really thin and I'm using my trace cut and smooth method to cut these out. You can make anything out of fondant if you use my method. So I'm carefully using my Dresden tool to trace these letters onto the fondant. Make sure you don't press too hard because you don't want to poke a hole in the fondant. And I always say you want to cut the center pieces of the letters out first before you cut the rest of the letters out. It just makes it so much easier. And before I cut them out, I'm going to take my tools to smooth out my cuts. Now that the center pieces are cut out, I'm going to cut out all of the letters. And anytime I cut anything out of fondant, I'm taking my time to smooth it with my fingers because the edges are jagged and this just makes everything look so much better. Realign that on top of the picture and do that for all of the letters. Now I don't want this to dry so I'm sticking it in a Ziploc bag and let's set that aside. Now I'm making the topper. I rolled out white fondant about a half inch thick. I printed that out the size that I wanted to be. I measured the top of the cake to make sure it wasn't too big. And again, I'm tracing this onto the fondant and then I'm gonna cut it out. Now anytime I cut anything out of thicker fondant, I make a shallow cut first. So I'm just sticking the tip of the blade in there just to create a line. Then I'm gonna use that line as a guide. I put my knife all the way down and then cut it out this way. I'm not going to mess up the fondant when I do it. And you can see in these little curved parts, it's kind of annoying. So I'm peeling the fondant away as I cut it because I don't want to mess up the number two. And I have videos where I show you how I make number toppers and I will link that in the description. 
So now this is jagged. Do you see all the pieces sticking out? So you have to smooth it out. So I'm flipping it over using my fingers to smooth the edges. There was a piece there that I missed. So I'm just cutting that piece away. You know, you have to take the time, like I said, to use your fingers, use your tools and smooth out the edges. Make it look nice and pretty. Beautiful. Now I have a skewer. I can't stick it in the middle because you're going to be able to see it. I can't stick it on the side. You're going to be able to see it. I can only stick it in the very bottom. That's why I rolled this out thicker and I'm twisting it in. I'm not jabbing it in and carefully like screwing it in there so you can't see it. Beautiful. Now I want to make cow print. So I have thin black fondant and I want to contour this to the number two. So I'm tracing that number two on the black fondant and now I'm cutting little cow prints. So I'm using the two as a guide and then cutting like wavy lines and smooth my cuts like always and then I'm going to get a little bit of water behind it and stick it down to the two. This way you can make it contour to the shape of the number two and I'm just doing that in like a random haphazard pattern. Good. Let's realign that on top of the paper so it dries to the correct shape and just set that aside and not wrapping it up so it could dry hard. Now I'm rolling out this red fondant and using my fondant smoother to smooth it all out. And I have another cake box lid and I'm making the barn so I need my ribbon cutter and I want this to be wider panels here so you could just make this however wide that you want. I will link that in the description and I'm cutting a bunch of strips in here. Every time I cut out a strip I'm going to take my fingers and smooth the edges and I'm just going to do that a bunch of times. And now I'm making this wood paneling kind of detail with my Dresden tool just random lines in all of these pieces. Now I want to cut the bottom of all the pieces so they're flat on the bottom. And I'm going to take my rulers and straighten these out so they dry straight. And let's set that to the side, get my cake out of the refrigerator. And I'm using a little bit of piping gel again around the entire top tier and then a little bit of water and let's thin that out. This is a four inch cake and I have a five inch cake pan because once you ice it, it gets a little bit bigger. So I'm tracing, I did that off camera. I traced that onto a piece of black fondant and I cut a circle out and I'm just covering the very top of this with that black piece of fondant. Now I'm starting in the very back of the cake and I'm holding this straight up and down, straight vertical. And then I have these angled scissors and I'm just going to snip the top off so it meets the top of the cake. And I'm going to do that around the entire cake. And where it meets in the back, do you see how there's like a little uneven strip? So I had to cut it a little smaller at the bottom and wider at the top to make it fit. And again, just use my scissors to cut that off. Good. Now, I feel like Christina Yang here with my little paddles. <laughs> Who got the Grey's Anatomy reference? But anyway, I'm trying to make sure that these are straight on here. And it looks like that cake is a little wider at the top than the bottom, but that's okay. You can't tell once that's covered in fondant. Let's put that back in the fridge. Now I am making these little doors and I, again, trace cut and smooth guys. This is the process. So sticking this on the white fondant and I'm tracing all the lines. Making sure you get all those inner pieces, peel it back. And now I have this little square cutter and I'm going to make a square window as well. And I don't have a, like, I'm not tracing this. I'm just visualizing it, right? Like I'm trying to make an even border in the middle and then I'm cutting an even border on the outside. And that looks good I'm using my tools to just smooth out those cuts and good I'm going to set that aside I'm going to do the same thing for this now do you see how I'm starting in the points and you know going up I'm not going to cut the pieces out first I'm making the lines if you start to cut all the pieces out first those X's could get distorted so I'm just being really careful and precise and trying to make the first cuts before I remove the entire piece. And I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Just anything that I could do to not distort the pieces. Good, and before I cut the entire thing out, I'm smoothing the inside pieces. Good. Let's realign that on top of the picture so it can dry a little bit to the correct shape. And I'm getting a little bit of water on the back of the square piece. Stick that on top of a thin black fondant. 
and I'm using my tools to get it into the correct position. And I'm cutting exactly on the white line. I'm not leaving a black border. And there's a little window and let's do the same thing except I'm flipping that picture over and I've flipped the white fondant over so the back is facing up. Get a little bit of water on the back. And then I'm flipping that black fondant upside down so the smooth side is facing down. Good. And then I'm going to do the same thing and use my tools to get it in the right position and I'm cutting it exactly along that white border. Now let's get the cake out of the fridge, get a little bit of piping gel on the back and I'm looking at the front of the cake and I'm sticking these pieces on there. Now let's make the other decoration. So again, I have this tractor, I measured my cake and I printed this out the size I wanted to be. I rolled that red fondant out a little thicker. It's not super thick, but it's not super thin. And here's where I say you have to look past the picture. So I'm trying to figure out where this red part goes and I'm going to be cutting circles out for the tires so you see how I'm looking past the tire and just drawing the lines I hope this makes sense I want to make sure I get all the inner details as well good peel that back and I want to use my Dresden tool to deepen the detail lines and I'm going to cut the entire thing out and again it's jagged when I cut it out and I'm just smoothing my cuts Good, now I have these circle cutters and let's see, that's a good size, that's a good size and I'm looking at the picture, that black fondant is rolled out as thick as the red fondant and I'm cutting two wheels out. And then I'm using those same cutters to cut into that red fondant so those wheels fit perfectly. Good, now I'm making the window so I am tracing this onto the white fondant and cutting that out. Got a little bit of water behind that and I'm sticking that down. And I'm using an edible marker to draw in the details because this is so small, it's kind of difficult for me to do that, uh, the process that I did on the barn door with this. So I'm just coloring in the edges. And I'm making the center of the wheels with these, I use those little piping tips to cut those out. And don't forget this little uh, thingy on top. <laughs> thingy that's what I'm calling it but you know what I mean get a little bit of water on the wheel where it's going to touch the red fondant so it sticks and I don't want that to dry out so I'm sticking that in the same bag as the names and let's set that aside now I want to make the animals so I rolled out pink fondant a little thicker not super thin not super thick guys I'm doing the same trace cut and smooth method on here so I'm looking past those hot pink pieces and I'm just continuing the line. You have to kind of look past the picture and I'm marking where the eyebrows go, I'm marking the smile. Then after I remove that picture, I take my Dresden tool to deepen the details. I'm not gonna cut a little hole out. I'm just pushing a hole in there with my Dresden tool. Sometimes those tiny holes are really hard to cut. And then again, I'm making a shallow cut since this is thicker fondant, just putting the tip in to create a line. And then once I have that line created, sticking the blade all the way down to the cutting board and cutting this entire thing out. You see how these little pieces, you got to work in little sections so you don't mess up the fondant. And once that's all cut out, I'm going to take my fingers and smooth my cuts like always. Good. Now I'm doing the same thing for the rest of the pieces. I have some hot pink fondant and I'm tracing all these pieces onto the fondant and there's light pink fondant for the belly and I'm doing the same thing there. Deepening the happy face with my Dresden tool and let's cut out all these pieces. Get a little bit of water behind the back. Now, I didn't show me smoothing out all the pieces, but I did. And I'm just looking at the picture and piecing this together. And for the nose, I'm just using a little ball tool to make the nostrils. And then I'm tracing these eyebrows onto the black fondant. You can also use an edible marker and just draw them on. That's probably a little easier. And I got a piping tip and I cut out the eyes and then a teeny white piping tip to cut out the little white sparkle in the eyes. And look how annoying these tiny pieces are to work with. <laughs> 
but just using your tools to be able to get them in the right position. And there's a little piggy. How adorable is he? Let's realign him on top of the picture and set that aside. Now, I filmed the rest of these animals in a time-lapse video because this was going to take forever. <laughs> I didn't want this video to be so long. But you can see I am doing the same trace cut and smooth for all of these pieces. Now, all these pictures that I use will be linked in the description in case you want to use these same animals for your cake. Now let's make the fence. I have this patchwork cutter and it's so annoying to work with. I got this so long ago. I don't even know if they still make this anymore. Um, I got a little bit of shortening in the cavities and I have really, really, really thin brown fondant rolled out and then I use a small rolling pin and push that on top to really cut the pieces out and I'm using my fingers to press this into the mold and removing these pieces. Now this is why it's such a pain. I, you have to use like a little needle tool and carefully peel these pieces back. I briefly looked to see if I could find this and I couldn't. However, there are other fence cutters that are so much easier to use than this <laughs> and I will link that in the description for you. So just, I'm carefully pulling this out. Each one probably takes like five minutes to do. <laughs> it's so annoying and I made like nine of them. Now I have my airbrush machine, a little bit of brown airbrush coloring in here, a paper towel to test it out. And I just wanna deepen the brown cause I just thought that brown looked a little too plain. You could skip this step if you want to. I'm just being a little extra with it. <laughs> Now let's cover the cake board, rolled out some green fondant, smooth it out. I'm putting it on a 12 inch cake board. So I have a 12 inch cake pan, flip it upside down and make a little mark. An eight inch cake is sitting on top. So I have a seven inch cake pan and I'm putting that in the very center and cutting these out. Now I have a video where I go into detail and explain how I do this. I will link that in the description for you. It's just an easy way to cover your cake board in fondant. Then I'm gonna cut a little spot in the back and bring my cake out of the refrigerator, get some piping gel on the entire cake board. Then I'm gonna thin out that piping gel with some water. I find if I thin it out with water, then I can easily move this into position. And I'm starting in the very back and using my fingers to press that up against the cake. And it wasn't long enough, but that's okay. I can lift it up, stretch it out a little bit because I have that Tylos powder in there and make the seam use my fondant smoother to smooth that down to the board and make sure it's pressed up against the cake. And then I have a sharp X-Acto blade and I am cutting it to the edge of the cake board. Make sure you don't cut the foil when you do that. Use your fingers to smooth it out and that looks good. Let's put that back in the fridge. I'm making the hills now. So I cut a straight line on the bottom and then I'm doing wavy lines up and down to mimic hills. And I'm gonna flip this around so the tops of the hills are facing me. And again, using my airbrush machine, getting a little bit of green in the cup and I'm spraying the very tops of the hills. Now, I love my airbrush machine. I will link this in the description. It does cost a little bit of money, but once you have it, I always say, once you have it, you're gonna use it all the time. It just makes your cakes look better. It takes your cakes to another level. So I did the tops of the hills really deep green and then I'm kind of doing a lighter spray as it goes to the bottom just to give it a little depth. And now I wanna make some blue clouds so I rolled out some light blue and it's kind of like the cow print where I'm just doing wavy lines back and forth and making it look like clouds and smoothing my cuts. 
And that looks good. Let's set those aside. Now I got the cake out of the fridge. I let those hills dry. You can't handle something after you airbrush it. Yeah, I got to let it dry. So I got some piping gel around the bottom and I'm starting in the back and wrapping that around the bottom piece where it meets. I'm cutting a seam down through both pieces, remove that back piece, get a little piping gel down and then press that together. And I'm using my fingers just to smooth it down. Let's figure out where to put these decorations. I'll hold up the tractor. That looks good there. Get a little bit of piping gel behind the back and a little piping gel behind the back of the fence. And I'm sticking it behind the tractor so it kind of looks like it's going the whole way around. <laughs> and then this continues around. So I'm using, I'm just putting the fence around the entire bottom section. Good. And where it meets in the back, I just needed two extra little pieces there. And I have to put on that little, is it a smokestack? Who knows? <laughs> but I'm getting uh, some piping gel behind the clouds and sticking those to the cake. And I'm sticking toothpicks in the bottom of the topper to either side of the skewer so it doesn't twist when I put it in the top. I got a little piping gel underneath and I'm sticking that down. Now I'm holding the name up and I want to see where's the center. The center is the O and that apostrophe. So that's where I'm starting from. There was a little holes in the icing. So I just patched that up <laughs> with some more icing and I'm just putting these letters. So I always start in the center and then build my way left and build my way right. So I can make sure that it is center on the cake. Now, where am I putting everything? I think that looks good. I'm a little out of frame, but I got a little bit of icing behind the ear of the cow and behind his foot because that's where it's touching the cake. And you could see a little bit of the icing. So I just took a paintbrush to remove the excess. Now, I have no idea where I want to put these. So I'm just playing this little game that I do where I'm like, uh, do I like it there? Do I like it there? I don't know. Should I put him there that he's blocking the tractor? This is what's going on in my mind. I have to move the end up so the pig's ear doesn't block it. I think I like him there. Let's get a little bit of uh, a toothpick underneath and a little bit of piping gel down and stick that down. And whoops, the K fell off. So I need to get a little more piping gel behind that and stick that back on. And for the sheep, where am I going to put him? I don't like him blocking the tractor. Um, I think he looks good there. Let's put the horse there, right? So this is the little game I play. <laughs> so I'm getting a little toothpick behind the ear and I'm going to stick that into the cake. This way he's not going to fall. I got a little piping gel, but that just gives a little uh, security blanket, if you will. Getting a toothpick underneath the sheep where he's touching the cake and some piping gel and sticking him down. All right, where am I putting this guy? I don't like him there. I don't like him there. I think he looks good there. So again, a little toothpick in the back, a little piping gel down, and I'm sticking the toothpick. I'm angling it down into the cake and then sticking him on it. And that way he's not going to fall off. He looks adorable. Do I put the bird there or on the top? I think I'm going to put him on the top, getting a toothpick underneath and sticking that in there so he doesn't fall off. That's the name of the game, toothpicks. <laughs> it helps prevent your decorations from falling off. So I'm getting some non-toxic glue around the cake board and on the back of that ribbon to wrap that around the cake board and pressing it down one more time with my finger to make sure it sticks. Now I'm making little cow prints for the middle tier. I didn't like how plain it was. So again, I rolled out some black fondant and I'm cutting these little random wavy lines to mimic, mimic a cow print. getting my cake out of the fridge. Got some water behind here and I cut some straight edges on the bottom where it's gonna meet that border and the top of the cake and just randomly sticking these on here. And there is the cake, so cute. So there you go, how adorable is this cake? And I know I keep saying adorable, but it's totes adorbs. <laughs> and I know I'm such a loser for still saying that, but anyway. Now this design, I came up with it based on the invitation that she gave me. So I will put that over here so you can see how I got the gingham border idea. And I did a white background with the blue clouds because that's what was on there and the fence and the tractor. So. What I like to do is ask people if they have decorations or invitations that you're, they're using that you, they can send over to me. That way I can get some inspiration for the design. Now with the magic of editing, I, I didn't edit it yet as I'm recording this, but I narrowed it down to probably 20 to 30 minutes, but I wish it only took that long to decorate this cake. This one probably took just to decorate, not to bake, fill, and ice. Just to decorate it was probably like eight to nine hours. Those fondant, animals take a while to do. And a lot of people ask me, 
why do I do fondant animals or fondant decorations as opposed to edible images? And it all boils down to what the customer wants. I feel like fondant characters, they look so much better. They look more professional. And it's so much so easy. Like anyone can print a picture, an edible image, and stick it on a cake. It takes a little bit more skill, and therefore you can charge a little bit more for your time and for the decorations. And it really is just up to the customer. So I will usually give two options, two or three options, like I always say. And I'll say, if you want edible images, it will be you know cheaper than having the fondant in the fondant characters. And I give them two different quotes. Now this cake is. Four, the top tier is four inch, the middle tier is six, and the bottom tier is eight inches. Now, I, I have a video showing you how I make small four inch cakes, and I will link that in the description. I bake all of my cakes in two inch high pans, except for my four inch cakes, I bake in three inch high pans. And it's just the way that I do it, I just like to do it that way. So underneath, this is what the four inch cake looks like. I do not tort the layers, I leave them as thicker layers of cake, and I have a thicker layer of filling in the middle. And then for the six and the eight inch cake, I bake two layers and I tort them into thinner layers and I fill them with the icing in between. It's just, it's just what I like to do. <laughs> I have video, I have a video talking about that and I will link that in the description as well, how you can use different sizes of cakes and different heights to get visual interest in your cakes. So this cake feeds about 40 to 45 people and how much did I charge? It was $625. So I think that's it. What new techniques did you learn in this video? I would love to know. Leave them in the comments below. Please like this video if you liked it and if you are enjoying my tutorials, I would be so grateful if you could buy me a coffee. My link is pinned in the comments below. And please keep in touch on socials and you can check out my website. Everything is listed in the description. And if you wanna stick around, you can watch this video next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. And remember, it's cake, have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.